Hello, my name is Apostle Dominic Osei. And Prophetess Leslie Osei. And welcome to our seventh year conversation. Amen. Seven years. Yes. God has been good. He's been amazing. KFT, seven good years. Seven good years. Wow. By the grace of God. Wow, wow, wow. God has been so good to us. Um, for the past seven years, we've seen great things God doing in this ministry. I mean, people are traveling all over the world to see what God is doing. God has given us an international audience, and it's just amazing. And so we want to celebrate God and thank Him for what He has done. And so we just want to... So at this point, every and anything that we can do to glorify God, that's what we want to do. And so we have some questions here that was given to us. And we have it in this bowl here. So we'll be answering as many as we can by the grace of God. So you can start first. Well, let's see. Dig in. Let's dig in. Let's see what this question is. Whoa. How does it feel? How does it feel to be just seven years yep. in ministry with an influence for this generation? You go. That's your question. Oh, I thought <laughs> I'm asking you. Oh, um, okay. Okay, that's my question. How does it feel to be seven years in ministry with an influence for this generation? I feel like I, I feel blessed. I feel honored that God decided to choose me, uh, per se. I'll uh, choose us to do such a work. You know, I remember when we first started, uh, it felt like we were in no man's land. So we, obviously we were in Stanford, Connecticut, where we didn't know anybody. And from our living room to where God has brought us, it's just grace. I see this is an act of grace. We didn't have any uh, any family member that were doing this in this capacity, and for us to be in this capacity, having such a global audience, how I feel is blessed and graced. That is that's the word for me. Blessed and graced. I mean, it makes me feel overwhelmed. I can say that I'm genuinely overwhelmed. The fact that you know, like you said, we started off essentially as nobodies, mm -hmm. a wretch like us, mm -hmm. who would have thought that God would have given us a generation. And I just want to encourage you, you know, when we first started, everyone in our ministry was a bunch of babies. And people would actually mock and ridicule us. They would tell us, oh, these little kids, these little kids, but these little kids are the same grown men and women who are now established by the grace of God. Mm. They have their marriages, they have their children, they have their jobs now. And so when God gives you a little bit and you take care of it, he trusts you with so much more. Mm. Now by the grace of God, we carry a generation, not by our own doing, but because the little he gave us, we decided to work it. I'm talking about three piece wow. suits, gowns, pretty dresses in a classroom. We didn't take it lightly at all. And so we just thank God and we know that. You see, as we were speaking, the Lord just released a word in me about this mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting this work, it felt like a mustard seed, the mm -hmm. smallest. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the place we were doing service was basically a kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And we saw us like really like babes in Christ. And people thought that we were just joking. Mm -hmm. And within seven years to see where God has brought us, uh, this is just amazing. And mm -hmm. we thank God and we, we, uh, we celebrate God for what he's doing in these seven years. Yes. So let's move on to the next question. So don't despise your humble yes. beginnings. Okay. Next question. Who is the funniest preacher? This is not a question that we should be asking anymore because we know that I am funny. Apostle comes and he's like serious and raw. But me, I'm funny. Hmm. See, the person behind the camera is actually smiling right now. <laughs> well, I think the whole world know that, that I you don't make anybody smile when you preach. <laughs> All right? I me do. On the way, other, me on the other side, other, other, me on the other way, the way? on the hand. <laughs> uh, literally, even if I'm saying something serious, I've always, and I've seen myself always have to say something that will make the people smile. No, so you laugh to, at your own jokes. That's what makes at least, it funny. At least, baby. At <laughs> least there is joke. Well, at least some, it's some not joke, a joke within the conversation or within the preaching to make people smile. No, guys. But you, on the other hand. In the comment section, <laughs> I need you to comment because we all know he laughs at his, jo his own jokes. Uh, That's what it, makes the people the laugh. The says they already made a decision already. <laughs> they said, I make them smile. Oh, your turn. All right, let's see something. 
What was your first sermon ever preached? First sermon in KFT. Um, Lord help me. Uh, Jesus. I can tell my first sermon ever preached out as a minister of the God way before KFT started was um, a message of um, about the, the birth of Christ. It was, I used Matthew chapter 2, uh, talking about how he was born and he had to be hidden uh, before Herod could have killed him and how Herod must die in order for Jesus to return back to Jerusalem. And it was a Christmas message, but you know, I believe that God has given me a message of, of spiritual warfare and was able to turn the Christmas story mm -hmm. into a warfare. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my friends uh, said, uh, you are the only person that can turn a Christmas story to a warfare. And I've never forgotten that message. Uh, that's Matthew chapter two. Uh, Herod must die in order for Jesus to return back to Jerusalem. All right, my first sermon, I don't even remember it, but I believe that most of my messages are, you know, the power of the Holy Ghost type of messages. And I also want to make mention that though this ministry is seven years, you have to understand that God has been processing the man of God and I for a very long time. And so I remember my pastor gave me the mic in about 2009. Actually, my first sermon was done at 10 years old, believe it or not, I was 10 years of age and I preached an Easter message and I believe that it even made my father rededicate his life to Christ and so many of my uncles, you know, with the red cups, they all rededicated their lives that sermon. And so that was my first one. Um, in KFT, like I said, I, I, I carry the message of the Holy Ghost. That is one of my prominent messages. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What anointing slash grace do you desire to carry? What anointing slash grace do I desire to carry? Um, I believe that there's a grace that is upon, um, I don't know, Bishop David Oyedepo. I believe that with the kind of influence he have had when it comes to the kingdom uh, own, own, kingdom ownership. I believe that that's a grace that I desire. Um, the faith, the, the kind of faith he carried and um, being able to, you know, do ministry debt free is something that my spirit has always been desiring. And so um, I can say that's a great grace that I believe that I've been able to tap in, seeing what we are doing here in KFT is something that I desired and I, I think I've received. Amen. I would say one anointing and or grace that I would love to carry is that of Peter. The Bible says that his shadow was even able to heal the sick. I have a deep compassion, as many of you know or may not know, I wanted to become a medical doctor, but God said otherwise. I got accepted to medical school and everything. And so I really wanted to carry the grace of healing, which I believe I do, but I wanna work and operate in such a level where literally when I pass by you, like, ooh, the fever's gone. Hallelujah, that's the level that I really, if I needed or desired anything, I wanna walk in a high level of the healing anointing. I believe that those kind of miracles, they bring unbelievers even to the church, so yeah. Well, I remember you yourself prophesied to me. Yes, I know. That my I wife know. would be a healer, I so. Know. Well, you prophesied to yourself <laughs> at this point. It's amazing how she, she like we be talking, and you know, the Lord speak to her as a third person. So anytime the Lord want to talk to me in that way, she don't even see herself in the conversation. Even when we marry, and I remember uh, we we're praying concerning, just praying. We we're just praying. It wasn't even praying about anything about the church or anything. We were just praying about our marriage and and stuff. And she she got up and said, "Well, your church will meet." I'm like, "What do you mean, your?" Like, <laughs> it's like God uses her to speak in that third person. So I was speaking to her. She's like, "Your wife." His name is going to be Akosia, and she'll be, she's going to be a healer. So in my mind, I said, this girl, she's serious. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you, and you're telling me about a different girl? Yeah. You know, so just, just to see, and then look at her. Now she's the Akosia, <laughs> sitting here, 
desiring the grace of healing. Yes, so, which I, I believe that I walk in a high revelation of healing because anytime I've prayed for someone by the grace of God, a miracle and a sign, but I'm trying to get to the Peter level. Mm -hmm. I want my whole shadow to just come <laughs> and heal you by the grace of God. That's what I'm trying to walk in. Amen, amen. You're next. So that's grace, yes. that's great. You, no, it's you. Oh, Any? I did already. Well, let's see, what is here? What were your, what were your most proudest moments of each other? Well, my most proudest <laughs> moment. Um, Kadula Makandese. It's been <laughs> so many different things. I believe, uh, well, when it comes to the, the way you've handled uh, birthing, I think, you know, um, that's one of the things that as I'm always like, wow, this girl is a trooper. This girl is a fighter, it's a warrior. And, mm -hmm. you know, getting to the labor room and being able to go and come, uh, I know it's, a, it's an act of grace, but at the same time, uh, it makes me proud to be your husband in that sense. And also, it's so many things, you know, your ability to relieve some of these stresses and, and so if I, even when it comes to the ministry, so there's a different aspect of it, but I think the most one that I can say, which is a critical one, which is perfect, and your ability to birth, you know, makes me proud of you, and, you know, being able to mother your children the way you love them, and the way you take care of them, you know, makes me proud. Well, my proudest moments, um, as he stated before, there's several, like a lot. Can you imagine being the wife of Apostle Dominic? You know, sometimes I wanna, but I am very proud of him um, in a lot of the areas. One of them, I would say one of the proudest moments is when we both got ordained. That was very special for me. And I remember, um, I think I still have the video. Someone took the video. Um, hopefully we can insert it in here. I think Lucy. But I just had the urge to kneel down and bless God for his life because I know how far we both have come. I know where he comes from. I know, you know, the things that have fought him. And so that moment was very profound. And to look at the back of his head, you know, the back of his head is so cute. And I remember just looking at the back of his head, like, look at this big-headed man of God <laughs> about to be ordained <laughs> and it made me so proud as a wife now I can mention so many more yeah he's a great father you know again I want to strangle him okay and it's important for me to say that because many people think that everything goes smoothly but it doesn't um, but he somehow knows how to maneuver things even just, you know, the 130 acres. I, as a woman of faith, I'm like, we're gonna get this land. But it would not have happened if, without his leadership. That was another proud moment. When we were signing that, I just felt like going on the floor and just holding onto his leg. Like, we did it. Your leadership has brought more fruit. It has shown other people that it can be done. This guy comes from, you know, Kumase, the other day we went to visit <laughs> and to see how <laughs> run down the place is and to see where God has brought him, it can only be God. We're walking in Dubai and people know, again, his, his big old head. They can identify the short lady and the tall guy. So just so many proud moments. Give me five. Amen. No. Well, I would say by their fruits, <laughs> you will know them. So if you see the fruits, at least now you know what we are dealing with here. Yeah. Uh, the next one. That's me. Okay, go ahead. Leaders are often judged for everything they do. They are consistently under a microscope. How do you deal with that kind of pressure? <sighs> Get off of social media, forget y'all, be like, bye, gotta go. You know, um, the Bible says that Jesus retreated often. He often retreated and it's important um, to note that we are in like a fishbowl and so everything we do is magnified 
you know, in the past days, my face has been extremely straight because you know my straight face game is on point. I will not crack a smile. You can tickle me and I will not smile. But even that, I've gotten so many random people asking me like, are you okay, is everything? And I'm like, so I'm not entitled to have a straight face at all. And it just magnifies this particular question because everything we do is under a microscope. So the day I don't smile, it's like, is she having issues in her marriage? Did her kids do something? When maybe I just don't want to talk to you today. Maybe I just want to be like Jesus and just go and focus uh, on what the Lord has called me for, you know? And so being in a, under a microscope, it's, it's very interesting because it gives you a level of self-awareness that you didn't even know you had. And so every toss, every turn, every Everything we do, literally, is so magnified. Sometimes when Apostle's preaching and he goes off on his tangents about women, I can feel the whole room literally staring at me like, is he talking about his wife? Most of the time, he's talking about y'all because his wife is good. <laughs> but even that, it's like everything is always magnified. So sometimes it gets annoying, but then to whom much is given, much is what required. So I do understand that with influence comes these things. So, yeah. Now, I, I think this is a very interesting question. Uh, and I believe that for, for me, how to deal with this kind of pressure is basically uh, to, live, to live in my truth. I, I don't think I get to worry about what other people are saying as much and just living my truth, living the way God has made me and being comfortable with just living that life. I believe that it gets tough when, um, you know, when we, we try, we, I, I believe that we, 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 we kind of have, we live a life of like an open book. Too we, open. We, we, there's nothing secretive. And so for me, I don't, it's like, what are you trying to find here? You know what I mean? So um, trying to live in your truth sometimes helps me, you know. Um, I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm not beating my wife. Hallelujah. I'm not, you know, by the, by the grace of God, I'm not doing things that is secretive for me to feel like, oh, somebody gonna find this out. And put somebody you in the shade room. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, just live in your truth. Let's live, live for Christ mm -hmm. and then we'll settle everybody, you know. I always say that God will always, God will always defend us. If, if you say that we've done something, if as long as we are cool with God, that's it. We gang gang, okay? Amen. After preaching, ideally, what would you like to do? Wow, look at the time. I think... Uh, <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. But it's been a great talk. It's been good. You know. Maybe um, we'll continue next time. Yes, yes. God has been good, KFT. Um, and we believe that many great things are going to happen. So next time, you know, we'll come back again and share more of our stories. Tune in whenever you see. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel because it can pop up at any time. See you. See you. God bless.